Good morning, ESM. As you all know, yesterday we had off for MLK Day, a day to commemorate Dr. King's life and legacy. Today I'll be sharing some information about his life and work right after news and announcements. On Monday, members of Martin Luther King Jr.'s family demanded that the Senate scrap the filibuster and pass voting rights legislation. King's family members and many activists attended a walk across Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge. The state's pending deferral legislation would establish national standards for voter registration, early voting, and voting by mail. George Gilbert, a D.C. resident and racial justice activist, said in a statement, they opened the schools and allowed us to drink out of their water fountains, but they still don't, have, don't want us to have the same access to voting. On Sunday at Destiny USA, four teenagers were suspected for a robbery at 503. A woman reported a robbery at the Buckle Fashion Retail Store. The victim was trying to stop the suspects from stealing two pairs of sunglasses when she pun was punched in the head. The su suspects were described as four teens from ages 14 to 15 years old. Anyone with information about the robbery should call 315-422-5222. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Something Better presents week two of Find Your Ally, Tell Your Story. We can't wait to see what you'll create out of Play-Doh and which new friends you'll make. See you today after school in B43. The Herf Jones representative will be here tomorrow, January 19th, during lunches to take orders for caps and gowns. Deadline to order is January 31st. Please see Ms. Ricora in the welcome booth if you have any questions or need the graduation packet. Martin Luther King Jr. was a Baptist minister and activist who led the civil rights movement along other prominent activists like Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, and James Baldwin to end segregation and legalize racism. He was an advocate for peaceful protesting, organizing, and playing a role in a number of nonviolent protests like the Montgomery bus boycott, the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, and the Birmingham campaign. During the March on Washington, Dr. King gave his infamous speech, I Have a Dream, in which he called for civil and economic rights and the end of racism in the United States. During the Birmingham campaign, MLK and many of his supporters were arrested. During his time incarcerated, he wrote Letter from Birmingham Jail, which laid out his philosophy of nonviolence, inspiring others to fight against injustice. I'll be back to share some more about MLK right after weather. As you know, we've had some two hour delays and snow days due, all, due to all the snow we've been getting. And unfortunately, all that snow is not going to stop anytime soon. This week, we'll have some very cold temperatures that will bring even more snow. Today will be cloudy with a high of 24 degrees and a low of 12 degrees. Tomorrow, we will have some light rain and cloudy skies with a high of 40 and a low of 14 degrees. Thursday is going to be very cold with a high of 17 degrees and a low of negative 12 degrees. The agitation caused by the Civil Rights Movement had a serious impact on national, national opinion, which led to the passing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and eventually the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Unfortunately, three years later on April 4th, Dr. King was assassinated while standing on the second story balcony of the Lorraine Motel in Memphis. On March 10th, the accused assassin, a white man named James Earl Gray, pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 99 years in prison. Today, MLK's life has been commemorated not only with a national holiday, but with the building of the King Memorial in Washington, D.C., near the Lincoln Memorial, the site of his I Have a Dream speech. Many states have public statues and paintings of him and have named streets, schools, and other entities after him, focusing mainly on his work during the Civil Rights Movement. I'll be back to close the show after sports. NFL divisional round is set as the Bengals will face the Titans, the Bills will face the Chiefs, the Rams will face the Buccaneers, the 49ers will face the Packers. Should have been the Steelers, but you know, that's okay. Congratulations to freshman Anaya Jones for Athlete of the Week. Anaya scored 23 points in a win over Central Square on Thursday. 
And congrats to senior Michael Parks for Athlete of the Week. Mike currently ranks first in New York State and now sixth nationally in the 55 meter hurdles. He owns the school record in the 55 hurdles. And congratulations to this year's ESM Hall of Fame inductees that were inducted over the weekend at halftime of the boys game. One of the Hall of Fame inductees, Ray Perry, was at the track meet over the weekend and was able to watch his 38-year triple jump record be broken by Rocky L. Rocky also placed first in the 55-meter dash and placed second in the 55 hurdles. Ray also got to see the boys track team win the Fred Kirschenheider Memorial Meet on Saturday, where they beat 19 other teams. Mike Parks won the 55 hurdles and broke his record again, getting a time of 7.52 seconds. Mike also placed first in both the long jump and high jump. Caleb Bird placed second in the 600 and Kevin Hasty placed third in both shot put and weight throw. The girls track team placed seventh on the meet on Saturday. Rachel Ladd placed second in the 1500 and fourth in the 1000. And Rhiannon Butchko got second in high jump. On Saturday, girls basketball team lost to Hanniger 38 to 26. Isabel contributed the most, scoring 10 points, and Anaya Jones also helped out the team with nine points. The boys team beat Baldwinsville 67, 66 to 57. Excuse me. Tristan Henderson led the team with 21 points. Aiden Bath scored 17 points, and Justin Kalkin scored 12 points to help secure the win. In upcoming games, the girls and boys bowling will have a match at home against Oswego at 3.30. And the ice hockey team plays at home against Kevin Casanova at 7.15. And I'm John, for Sports. Dr. King left us a message that applies to us, especially in this day and age. Most important and crucial period of your lives for what you do now and what you decide now at this age may well determine which way your life shall go. And the question is whether you have a proper, a solid, and a sound blueprint. And I want to suggest some of the things that should be in your life's blueprint. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodyness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. Always feel that you count. Always feel that you have worth. And always feel that your life has ultimate significance. Secondly, in your life's blueprint, you must have as a basic principle the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. You're going to be deciding as the days and the years unfold what you will do in life, what your life's work will be. Once you discover what it will be, set out to do it and to do it well. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or you fail. Be the best of whatever you are. Finally, in your life's blueprint, must be a commitment to the eternal principles of beauty, love, and justice. Well, life for none of us has been a crystal star, but we must keep moving. We must keep going. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl, but by all means, keep moving. 